and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. Today in part three of the Tascam 122 Mark III repair series here, we're going to replace these surface mount electrolytic uh, capacitors on this uh, capstan motor control board here. Um, these caps uh, can go bad and cause this uh, motor to not run stable. Um, there are a few caps that are mostly responsible for that, but I'm just going to replace them all while I'm in here. So when you're doing something like this with capacitors, the first thing you're going to want to do is just mark down uh, what these caps are. Um, if you have a board like this one that's marked pretty well, you can see here C12. Um, this capacitor is a 3.3 microfarad 25 volt cap. So just go through, mark down what capacitor it is and what its rating is on there. That's going to be the first step. So that way you'll know how to get them back in the right orientation. And also from that list, you can uh, get yourself a bill of materials for what caps to order to replace these. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and write these down. Okay, so I've made a list of the uh, caps that are in this unit. Let me touch you down to the board here to get a closer look. And I've just notated on my list, you know, what these caps are. Like C13 here is a uh, 10 microfarad at 16 volt. And I just went through and made notes. And I did want to point out that these capacitors, the footprints are marked with a heavy line. That you can see here on one side and that corresponds to the negative that you can see here the black line on these caps is the negative but be careful this particular circuit here there's two bipolar caps c12 and c14 so you'll need to get bipolar caps to replace those um, so after i made a list of these and i knew what their positions were and i knew uh, what my bill of materials was to order these caps, I would then take a measuring device, which I happen to have here in my Mitutoyo calipers. And I would just measure these, like let's get a measurement on this one. So we got about four-ish millimeters there. Okay, then you can take a depth measurement. You could remove one from the board if you want and measure it, uh, but you're gonna get a general measurement uh, for the size of the, the cap and that way you're going to know what to order. I'm not going to go into depth on uh, how to order the caps and stuff in this video because it's, it's just too extensive of a subject and quite frankly it's it's a pain in the butt to actually order <laughs> co replacement capacitors. I'll just say that, that what I got to replace these for the Polarized caps, I got uh, Panasonic FC series, which is a good power supply cap. It's an also a good general purpose cap, which is what these would be considered. And then I got uh, Nippon Chemicon uh, Bipolars caps for these two. Um, they're all in the correct size and footprint. All of the polarized caps, I went for 105 degrees C and uh, over 3,000 hour life rating, which just makes them last longer in circuit. The bipolars don't have ratings that high, but I believe these are 2,000 hour Nippon Chemicons that I got. They're 2,000 hour rated, 85 degrees C, I believe. But that's not going to be a huge impact on this because this is not in the power supply and it's not in a hot uh, area of a case or something. So... So the next subject to talk about with these surface mount caps is how do you remove them? There are a lot of people that advocate just grabbing these with pliers and twisting them and snapping off and they, they will snap right off. Me personally, I, I think that puts a lot of stress on the, the pads under here and I'm just not sure why you'd want to do that when, you, when it's not necessary. Desoldering tools are not that expensive. The best way to move these would be with surface mount desoldering tweezers uh, or hot air. I'm going to use two soldering irons and just touch both sides and flick it off. That's what I'm going to do. It's, it's really that simple. There's no need to mechanically 
remove these or heat up one side and bend it over or anything just just melt the solder on both sides and take it off like it's it's really that simple um, so I'm going to be doing that next to remove all of these so just to show you what I'm doing I'm going to use two soldering irons I'm going to use my CSI iron and also my uh, small Heiko iron here uh, just to get get in there on both sides of it and and flip those caps off the board just so you can get a good idea of how I'm removing these I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, C7 from the board on camera I'll probably just remove the rest of them off camera just melt one side melt the other and just flick it off so I'm gonna do the rest of those off camera and I'll come back and show you the next step so the next step in this process is going to be to clean up the solder pads so what I like to do is just take a little bit of RA flux here put it on the pads And then since I have a desoldering tool, I like to use that just to suck the solder, extra solder off those pads. And then it works just just that simple. Sorry if I look a bit clumsy, I'm trying to work around the camera here. Just make sure we get all those cleaned up. Okay, they all look fairly clean there and they're looking good shape so the next thing I'm gonna do is just clean the board a little bit uh, to remove some of that that flux on there and then we'll uh, mount the new caps now before I continue on this I do want you to take note of the fact that we're doing this while the unit is mounted in here and it's definitely mounted to the capstan motors you can see these little fine wire leads that are coming out of the motor in order to control it um, in order to work on this board and clean it better uh, i want to prevent liquids from going down in there it's probably not not that big a deal but i don't want to take a chance on it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some caps on tape to uh, cover that up a bit so we don't damage it. Now, honestly, it's probably not that big of a deal, but you really don't want to get a liquid down in there. I've, that's one of the things I've learned working on this stuff over the years is is that's one of the biggest things you can have happen in a bad way is for flux and cleaners and things to go places that they don't need to go. So I'm just going to be safe, cover that, and now I'll clean uh, the flux off these pads and get ready to solder in the new caps. Okay, to clean the board, I'm just using a Q-tip with a little 99% isopropyl alcohol. To get that little bit of flux up off there just clean gently when you're doing this you could uh, possibly grab grab up a little spike of solder and pull a pad off if you're not careful and you can see the junk that came off so now 
we're going to be ready for soldering the cast back on perhaps some of these these pads like here they're not completely covered with solder and they should probably be tinned but I think I'm just gonna go for it it'll be all right they'll tin up as I'm doing it so these are the caps that I got to replace I think I'm gonna go set SC these are actually uh, Panasonic H C caps that I got from Mauser these are the little surface mount replacements that'll go in there I'm gonna start I'm just gonna kind of go in order actually and probably just uh, move down this side and then do the ones to the right afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate how to solder these new caps on the board. You start by just applying a little bit of RA flux to the pads. And you're gonna grab your soldering iron and your capacitor. And you're going to place your capacitor, making sure you got the correct polarity on it. You're going to place it onto the pads. You're going to get a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron. This is one of the very few times that you're going to put solder on your iron and bring it to something. And the flux is going to bring it in and solder it down on that one side. What I like to do is do several caps that way, soldering from the right. Then I'll flip the whole thing around and uh, solder the other leg on it. But I'm going to go through the board and do the, the ones going this way and flip it around and solder the other side of it. But that's really all you got to do. And I'm just using very simple tools to do all this. This is a, I think about a two, two millimeter chisel tip on the iron. That's all it is. These caps are not that small. So I'm going to go through and uh, install the rest of the caps on the board. Now that I've got all these in installed, I'm going to go and uh, solder the other sides. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of flux to them. And uh, don't worry if they're slightly askew, which some of these are. As long as... Uh, it's going to make contact with the pad under there. It's going to be fine. So I'm just going to get in here with my iron and some thin gauge solder. And solder these opposite pads over here. And that's all it takes. Let's go ahead and get this guy in here. Not a lot of room. But that's all you do. And now they're soldered in there fine. Okay, here's the board with all the new caps installed. Just double check that you got your polarities right and everything's soldered in. Uh, correctly is making contact and you should be okay. I'm just going to go ahead and clean the board with a little bit of um, MG Chemicals flux remover and uh, get her all cleaned up because you really don't want to leave that junk in your circuit board. That flux can uh, have a, a bad effect after quite a few years. So I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning and like I said, I'm not going to get too aggressive with it because you know, of this uh, hole here and these filament wires. But I'll clean that out next. And when that's done, I think we might be ready to reassemble this guy. That'll be fun. I like to just brush it a bit with that wire brush and come back and try to Clean it with a Q-tip. Get that junk off there. You can generally feel it with your fingers if it's if it's clean or not. 
sometimes you have to clean it a couple of times to get it to get it truly clean but that's actually looking pretty good right now all right on to the next step well that about completes the rebuild of this transport for the Tascam 122 Mark III. We have got under here, we've replaced gear C. We've uh, cleaned and lubricated and reseated all the gears under this plate. We've gotten into the real motor mechanism, put a new drive tire on that thing, and we replaced all of these uh, SMD caps on the capstan motor. Um, the only other thing I could think to possibly do to this at this point is to just replace the the actual capstan roller down, down here. But that was working fine when I tested the unit before, and I I mean this thing looks great. It doesn't it doesn't look messed up, but that bit me once on this project already. <laughs> I mean, if I have to, I'll pull it back out and change that later. But I don't. I really don't think we have to. I can't see anything wrong with that. So, final step here is I'm just going to clean uh, the tape path here with some uh, isopropyl alcohol, and then we'll uh, reassemble the unit. Unless I'm forgetting something, but I think that's it. So yeah, I think we're ready for a reassembly on this, and it's just reverse of the way it came out. Carefully drop the transport into position here. Line up these top screw holes. Make sure you don't bind up any of these cables. Put your two upper transport screws in, the two lower ones. Uh, reconnect your cables. And you can flip the door down and put the uh, the door piece will just snap back in there. When you're reattaching these connectors, just don't force them too much. They have they have a, a way around they go. There's a little slot that'll that'll guide you to put them in the right way. And plus, these uh, cables tend to remember which way they're laying. So if you feel like you're having to twist one really far to make it go in, double check what you're doing. So like these cables, like this red one just naturally wants to go towards the red connector here. So make sure everything's seated. All right, that should be it. Now, I guess we'll plug her in and see what happens when we try to run it. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how to get this on camera. I'm just going to power it up now and see if anything weird happens as I power it up. So I'm going to eject and uh, put a tape in the transport. Close it up. Gonna power it on, see if anything funny happens. That's a good sign. No noises, no lights on the front. So I'm gonna go and fast forward first. 
That sounds good. I'm going to stop. I'm going to play. That was a bit noisy, but it is playing. Pause. Play. I'm going to stop. I'm going to rewind. And hit play. And she is playing. I'm going to grab some headphones real quick and uh, just listen to the audio on it. Okay, I spent some time running some tape through it, listening on the headphones, checking all the functions. Uh, it seems to work fine, just like it did. <laughs> so I'm going to say that this is probably fixed now. I'm not going to totally close it up yet. I'm definitely going to go hook it into my system. I'm going to run this for several hours at least over the next few days just to burn it in and get a good idea that it's it's definitely repaired so I don't have to pull it all back out and redo it and everything. So that'll conclude the three repair videos on this for now. The first one, we fixed the, the headphone jack. I'll put a link to that uh, below this one. In the second video, we fixed the C gear. Uh, we also did the drive wheel rubber roller. In the second video, in the third video, we did the surface mount caps on the capstan motor, which seemed to be working fine. Nothing blew up, so I think we're good there. So I'll do one more video on this later after I burn it in and stuff and we get it set up in the rack and we'll do a bias adjustment on this and that'll uh, be the final video on this one. So I'll get a couple of screws in that and uh, then I'll have to figure out how to work this all into my setup. Originally, I want to use this space for uh, one more 160 XT and one more uh, 1176 uh, warm there. Um, so this is going to have to find somewhere else to live. And I also have to figure out how to work it into the patch bay up there. And figure out I've got two uh, tape inputs on my console. And one of them obviously is going to be the uh, MX-55, which we're going to work on next. All right, that's it for now. I'm going to, I'm actually not going to play any music in this. The copyright uh, claims on YouTube are just getting ridiculous. So I'm not going to play anybody's copyrighted music. I did buy some blank cassettes for this, and I'm going to transfer some of my own music onto it to play for you. And we'll do that whenever I do an alignment on this. So whenever we get to that point, then I'll actually play some music through it. Thanks for watching.